Showtime. So. Hi, I'm Trish Gore. I'm president of the Oakland Education Association. And while I am here to learn more about the Gulen movement um, specifically, I do know that the unregulated um, growth of charter schools is restoring public schools in our country and that you cannot buy into or should not be able to buy into the public school system um, through political connections and money and secrecy. So the Gulen movement really does show what happens when you have an unregulated, privately managed system um, affecting our children? And the Gulen schools in Oakland, do they have, we have any? One. We have one called Bay, Bay Area Tech. And what does it do? I don't know. Nobody it's hard knows. to find out. Yeah, nobody knows. I mean, really. <laughs> it's I mean, a mystery. It's, it's, it's a mystery. They, yeah. That they've been in two different locations, but no, they're not um, transparent in the least. And are you surprised by all the corruption scandals and the oh, charges is, of the ACLU of segregation? It, I mean, um, a, it's something that we have known for several years, and it's really um, may, might be amazing to other people, but it's refreshing to us to see all of these organizations and all of these um, understandings of what the charter school movement is uh, coming to bear right now. We're at a real crucial tipping point and it needs to tip back in the direction of public schools. Now they say they're giving kids choice, parents and kids choice. What do you think about that argument that they're giving choice to children and parents about the schools that they can go to? The choice that the American people want is the choice of a quality public school in every neighborhood, managed democratically, transparent, and um, yeah. So and you don't, you don't. So in California, they, they make the choices. It's not the students that make the choices. They make the choices. And even though they say, "Well, we have the same demographics. We teach poor kids." That is a lie, because quite frankly, there's poor, and then there's poor. There's poor with hardworking parents that are struggling, that work every day to get their kids to school, and then there's poor where parents aren't involved in their children's lives. And those aren't the children that charter schools take. They take the children of involved parents who will probably would probably be successful in any system. Now there was a report that five billion dollars is being drained from public schools. Uh, the, is, economic, is that... the economic impact of charter schools is another thing that has to be really the economic and social impact quite frankly is something that really has to be studied. We're actually going to demand that I think I think in our next bargain that before you open a charter school you have to have an economic just like you have an environmental impact report you must have an economic and social impact report before you grant a, um, authorization to a charter school. Now Proposition 39 requires school districts to accept you want the whole charter school. Thing, don't you? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, wouldn't that put school districts in financial liability if they have to accept every proposal for a charter school? I mean, you know, if, how many that's high schools exactly do you need in Richmond? Well, I mean, that's uh, okay. the only thing right now. I mean, what I'll talk about specifically about Prop 39 is that I was at Castlemont High School yesterday, and the, which shares a campus with a charter school that got rooms under Prop 39, they have not had the enrollment to fill those rooms, and yet Casamont could not have a speech therapist who by law has to have a private room. They could not take one of the empty rooms that the district gave the charter school in order to provide for their children. This is how topsy-turvy uh, it, it is. Is that discriminatory? Well, it's absolutely is discriminatory. It's absolutely um, putting the thumb on the scales in favor of charter school. And that's why we're running four candidates in four different districts that will overturn that kind of mentality in Oakland.